Hey everyone, we're here at the next video in our Tools for Mapping series, originally written on digitalmapmaking.com, uh, but going through them one by one here. So today we're going to talk about TurfJS. I love TurfJS. Uh, as I put in my thing here, Turf is life. Uh, this is really great for JavaScript people, but that being said, this is also something that is present in many other languages. PHP has similar libraries. Essentially what you're looking for is just a geographic functionality library. So in JavaScript, that's turf. So at first you might not really understand like what's the big deal about turf, but when we look at it, we get all these different functionalities, finding the center of, of some geography, signing the bounding box, being able to measure the distance or between two points or the length of a line, or creating a polygon that envelops another um, shape that we've made. These all seem a little bit abstract, so I'm going to break that down a little bit. I might make a whole course on turf at some point because this is truly one of the most valuable libraries out there when it comes to making real geospatial applications that aren't just putting shapes on the map but actually involve some kind of analysis. So in the old days before turf or before I knew about turf you used to have to find all this stuff by yourself. So if you wanted to find the distance between two points this was really complicated because it's not just plain geometry of like oh I have X, Y coordinate and X, Y coordinate, you had to account for the curvature of the earth and how that affects distance when it comes to measuring things on the actual earth. So that's where turf comes in so much more handy where you don't have to go looking for like scientific calculations from geographers and do a whole bunch of really complicated math. That, it, that's where turf lets you leverage its power. Now to break down turf into like an actual example, I have this post, the wonder of turf.js. And first let's look at just a couple functions that they have and then look at it in, in, an, in an example, okay? So some of the stuff I really like using or that I use all the time in turf, um, center, the dot center function. So this finds the center of a polygon or a, a line or anything like that. Now there's some tricky stuff around finding the center of a shape. Uh, for instance, if you take a crescent moon shaped polygon, what's the center? Is it inside the polygon or outside? I'm going to put that aside for now, but turf is very helpful uh, in this regard for just quickly finding the center. Uh, bounding box, endlessly useful, often great for zooming in and out uh, to find the right bounding box to zoom into a feature. Distance, as I said before, finding distance between two points. Intersect, this is again really great, finding any place that two polygons overlap or lines that intersect with each other. And another one here is buffer that basically allows you to um, take a shape, assume, let's say it's 100 meters out from every side, and then maybe you'll find the bounding box of that shape instead of the, the original shape itself, or just create a shape that kind of has this buffer around it. So these are just some random functions, right? There's, there's like dozens and dozens of functions in turf, but let's look at a quick uh, problem here. So for this, I'm saying, okay, we're using Mapbox Directions API. We're building a navigation interface. So in order to do that, we have to know we're going to get back a line and we have to know like, where is the user on that line? What's the next step that they're going to have to take so that we can just, we can show the correct instructions to them. Okay. So if we're going to use that, we, we can go, okay, we have a few bits of information. Okay. We have the user's current location. We have their end destination. We have the line, which is what we got back from some navigation API that, that tells us like the route that they're going to go. And from the navigation API, we also have like a series of um, waypoints or steps. So where are you going to turn right? Where are you going to turn left? Uh, where are you going to keep going straight for a long time? And each of these waypoints probably has like some little text attached to it that says like turn right at Bleecker Street, turn left on Union Avenue or whatever, right? So we want to show the right one to the user based on where they are. So in order to do this, let's think about what we what we actually have to do with turf, right? So we're going to have to use the user location as we have it to know where the user is. We have to find where they are on the line because we want to find out what the next one is. So we have to find out how far are they along the line. And it's not necessarily just what point are they closest to, but what's the next one, right? So as soon as they pass one of those waypoints, you don't want to show those instructions anymore. You now want to show the next set of instructions. So one thing that we'll really 
So, so let's break it down into actual turf functionality to give you a sense of how this is so useful. We would use turf nearest point online, first of all, because we have our navigation line and our geolocation might be a little bit off. It's not necessarily directly on the line every time. So what we're going to do is turf gives us this function, nearest point online. Let's find it. And basically, we can take a point and a line string, and it'll give us the closest point on the line string. And they have a little example here. So if, if our geolocation's a bit off, but we want to find the exact point on the string, on the line, that is closest to that point, there we can do that. So now we have basically the user's point on our actual navigation line at the current moment. So then next, as a bit of an extra step, this is not necessary, but again, shows you a little bit about turf. Uh, we can check the distance between those two. We can take the point on the line that we just got back and the original geolocation point and say, look, are they close enough that this is accurate? Because if they're like 50 meters apart, probably there's something wrong with our system and we need to like recalculate the whole navigation or something essentially. But if they're like one meter off or five meters off, it's probably fine, right? So we can continue with our algorithm. Okay, so the next thing is we're going to have to find the length of the line that represents the, from the beginning of where the user started to where they currently are, right? And we're going to use turf line slice to do that. So turf line slice basically takes the original line, you give it a start point, and then a point somewhere on that line, and it'll give you back a line that's only as long as the slice that you wanted. So this is great because then I can figure out, oh, what's the length, right? So then we use turf length to find the total length of our sliced line, right? So now we can say, okay, the user has the whole directions thing is 50 meter, is 500 meters long. They've gone 50 meters. And then I can check in my little API to see, oh, once they've crossed 50 meters, what's the next point, okay? So I'm not, Gonna, uh, like I might make a separate video that actually walks through this example in a real world situation, but it's mainly just to get you to theor theoretically in your head understand like how these different turf methods can be chained together to do analysis that you might not have expected. Okay, so if you ever have a client that needs spatial analysis or you're doing spatial analysis, really turf is where you can get really creative because. You're, you have these different basic tools and you can put them together to create some really, really cool, really valuable analytical data. So that's my little spiel on turf. We'll, like I said, we'll probably have a whole course on this at some point, but it's really a great tool and I hope you use it.